Podcasters, once again, thanks for tuning in. Chris Trot here from the tour team, coming to you from the penthouse suite, also known as the top deck of the tour truck, on location at the 2020 Team Taylor Made photo shoot. My guest for this episode is super fresh, trust me when I say that, off a victory at the World Golf Championships in Shanghai, where he became the first European to win three World Golf Championship titles. The victory was his fourth of the year and his first of the new season. He is your 2019 FedEx Cup champ, and it's fair to say you're in a good place right now, Rory McIlroy, and the golf game is looking sharp. It is. Thanks, Trotty. Thanks for having me on. Congrats on the win. Shanghai to Florida. Physically, you got to be a wreck. Uh, physically, I'm, I'm feeling it. It's the end of the day. Uh, it's been a long day. We've been out in the heat. Um, but I'm okay. You know, this is my last commitment of the day and uh we've saved the best for last 100 percent, mate i've been revved up for this one all day i want to know you win this thing in china and it's a cool win uh in a playoff you get on an airplane you get over here when do you actually get to celebrate this success um i don't know probably uh i, I think I honestly, I've had a great year. You know, I've I've done a lot of cool things, and I I I haven't really had a chance to to celebrate any of them because, um, you know, after the players, you're you're sort of getting ready for Augusta and getting ready for major season. After the Canadian Open, it was straight into the U.S. Open. After the Tour Championship, I went straight to Switzerland and played over there, and then obviously won last week in China, and now I'm here and. You know, I've still got an event in Dubai. Um, I think I'm going to take two months off. Going to take December and January off mostly, and I think that's when I can reflect and celebrate a little bit and have a bit of downtime and, you know, really, you know, enjoy what I've done this year because you know it has been one of the best years of my career. And um, you have to celebrate these things. You're, you know, not every year you're going to win four times and and do all the things that I've done. So, you know, you you have to take the time to to enjoy i mean you know what's the point in doing it if you can't enjoy it you know so um i'll have plenty of time over the holidays to you know enjoy and and celebrate and and you know feel good about myself before turning my attention to to 2020 and what does a celebration entail these days i appreciate when we're all young we all know what that answer is but you're still young but now in the position you're in your life what does a celebration for you look like yeah i think a celebration for me looks like you know staying staying home having a few glasses of wine um being surrounded by friends and family that you really appreciate uh that have sort of been with you on the journey the whole way Mm -hmm. uh and that's really it you know i I, yeah used to go out you know with my mates you know go to the bars go to the clubs get hammered take shots all that sort of stuff but have a curry on the way home have a curry on the way home um (laughs) throw up and go and do it again yeah, exactly the next day. Both getting a bite <laughs> job done <laughs> but uh yeah that's sort of like if i even think about that now it exhausts me so i'm just sort of just sort of try to keep it low-key um and now that we've you know we've s- sort of yeah we have we've moved into our new house down here in florida and it's really nice i want to start spending more time here and enjoying that and you know that's that's the stuff i sort of i like to do nowadays is, is be a little more civilized you alluded to it a little bit there. Do you think that I feel from the outside looking in, but it's not for me to say, I feel like you're playing the best golf you've played since you've been with TaylorMade. Do yeah. you think you're playing the best golf of your career right now? I do. I do think I'm playing the best golf of my career right now. I think it consistently, week in, week out. Um, I, I don't think I've ever had a better stroke average um, on the PGA Tour. You know, I, I won, the, I won the, the lowest stroke average this year. Obviously, my strokes gained. Numbers were... Uh, better than they ever have been um yeah i've just i've whatever it is I, i've been consistently able to to turn up and shoot good scores and get myself into contention you know i thought last year was a good year i think i got myself into seven final groups on sunday uh and i i think i've i passed that easily this year um you know got the four wins you know big wins you know tournaments that i haven't won before you know that's cool and um you know people will say you know he hasn't won a major in a few years and all that sort of stuff but i think with these wins you know i keep beating some of the best fields in golf so you know inevitably if i keep doing that you know my my turn will come in these majors and i'll i'll hopefully start to to win those again 
So when you look at the numbers and the stats, I mean, I've got some of them here that we can talk about, but where do you look to improve? Because obviously it's a game you're always trying to improve. You're always trying to, we touched on it earlier and we talked about you having the mirror on the putting green and eye line there. It's always a point where you're trying to check calibration. Like, yeah. am I good? So where do you look to improve? So I think one of the best things about being with TaylorMade is I can really utilize James Cornish, who's our stats guy and house stats guy. And, and you know, I, I and we as a, as, as a team, Harry and myself, rely on James to tell us, OK, where where can I pick up that extra half a shot a day or where, you know, you know, so you know, for me, one of the one of the biggest areas that it's very easy to pick up a shot or, you know, a quarter of a shot even in strokes gained is from 200 to 225 or 225 to 250. And that's just maybe working a little bit more on my longer irons. Um, you know, it's, you know, driving is always going to be the foundation of my game. You know, I got to keep that as strong as I possibly can try to, you know, gain over a stroke around on the field. And then the other stuff, you know, some of my iron play and my wedges I can improve on um you know i've drastically improved my putting this year i mean it's the best it's ever been and if i can just keep chipping away at these things that you know maybe haven't been strengths before but i can keep gradually getting them better but maintaining the strengths of my game and the foundation of my game um you know i i said it at at the end of sort of last season or the 2019 season um tiger is the only guy that's averaged three strokes gained on a, in a in a PJ tour season and uh, I would love to get to that number eventually and that's constantly trying to improve all aspects of my game to, to get to that point shows you the importance as a kid of listening to your statistics teacher yeah. you can actually have an impact <laughs> on an athlete's game if you do that well you can it's it's very I think nowadays so many sports and especially golf are statistics driven and there's a lot of analysis involved and you know, we're trying to, I think, the game of golf nowadays, there's so much parity in it that, that it's the little differences that, mm-hmm. that are going to separate you from the rest of the competition. So, And everyone else is doing the same thing. You know, they're all trying to look for that, you know, 1% or, you know, fraction of a shot that's going to make the difference. And um, that's what you need to do because, you know, all the guys out on tour are so good, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just about finding those little things that, that can help you you know, one shot a tournament, you know, that that's that's even a big improvement. Mm. We all need an understanding of this and especially the people on this truck. And one of the things that I look down these stats, like I say, in strokes gained off the tee, 2018 sixth, 2019 first. Yeah. You then come to this photo shoot, you hit sim, you try the fairway wood, the sim and that. Change is coming because the competition will be changing. Yeah. Where does that sit with you when you've got such great numbers? Yeah. Um, that I, was the elephant in the room we were going to have to talk about. At some so, point. I th- so I think for me, and I think with, you know, working with you and Keith and Adrian and all the guys, knowing what my numbers are when I'm driving at my best, and that might necessarily mean, you know, I might want an extra two or 300 RPMs of spin to hold the ball online and that might m- mean that I, I i hit an extra fairway a day which is four extra fairways a tournament which is four more birdie opportunities during that you know during that uh that round so or during that tournament um so for me i think what we learned from 2018 when i was i mean sixth isn't bad and strokes came off the team yeah, I mean, no sixth joke. best driver you know we're sort of looking at that as, as a disappointing year mm. um but i know when like like this year i was first in strokes gained off the tee i got my spin up to around 24 2500 because it's still it's not taking anything away from distance but it's it's holding the ball online better so that if i do you know hit one a little offline it's still you know i I use this term that the tiger uses a lot you can still cheer for it you can still tell it to try to hold the fairway or you know so just a little bit more spin in the driver is is a big is a big thing for me it usually correlates in me in leading the driving stats so you know whenever we really try to get dialed in with with the new sim driver it's it's spin rate for me is a big thing spin loft is a big thing and as long as i can keep those two numbers where i need them to be then you know the driver should be should be great so on the subject of spin and i've jumped forward here because i was going to ask you about this 
Tiger plays with shape. Tiger talks about knocking spin off. Do you think that's a generational thing? Because now you're talking about putting a bit of spin on. Yeah. It shows you how important spin is, one. Yeah. But do you think, and it, try and think about the question a little bit a different way. He tries to knock spin off and he loves a lot of spin on his iron play. You're a low spin guy. So where's that correlate in terms of control? Yeah, but I think I... You know, I, I grew up in a in an era where, you know, the first golf balls I used were balladas and they were, you know, they were soft golf balls mm -hmm. and they spun a lot and you had to learn how to take spin off them. And I think as the years have went on and, and obviously golf ball construction has changed and it's more about high launch, low spin. Um, for me anyway, especially with someone with a lot of speed that can go, that can almost go too much that way. So like in the middle of last year, I changed back to the TP5 ball just because I wanted more spin. And I think if you're a talented player and you have the, the skill, it's I think it's better to play with more spin and be able to take spin off. So, you know, you know, there's no there's no doubt that Tiger is the best iron player in the game. And I think one of the reasons for that is that he he can play with a lot of spin when he needs it, but then he can also take spin off and he can flight it down and you know he he's got so much versatility with his arm play um and that is something you need especially when you're playing on tour and you got to get to back right pins or front left pins and being able to shape it and spin it and and do all these different things um you know spin is is really important for for the better player and and i realized that over the last couple of years and that's why i've went to the tp5 and and wanted more spin on my driver and because it you know, having more spin means you have more control. And ultimately, if you have more control, you're going to play better golf. Mm. When you, in the past, again, on the ball, you've talked about the wind and how the ball is so stable. The TP5 versus balls you've played in previous years is so stable in the yeah. wind. It goes through the wind. Just explain a little bit to the amateur, because it's crucial. You know, we're talking Rory McIlroy's name, Tiger's name, and we're talking spin. It's crucial. It's important. Yeah. Two yeah. of the best golfers it on the planet. So <laughs> what with the wind, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so it's more, I mean, so wind, I, I would say, you know, what I've noticed about the TP5 and the TP5X that I, you know, I've used them both for probably the same, you know, 18 months and probably the last 18 months with the, the TP, TP5. Um, it's it's the crosswinds, right? It's the, you know, when you when you strike a ball well, you know does it does it get through that wind and is it stable and it's not getting hit as much by the wind you know i you know playing the tp5 or changing to the tp5 you know into the wind you know obviously it's got more spin on it so you have to play for that you know i'm, I'm gonna have to take an extra club you know and flight one down or whatever but that's the you know there's costs and benefits to everything and that's the trade-off was playing a, a, a spinny ball maybe i have to take an extra club than someone that plays a tp5x but I'm comfortable doing that because I know that this ball for my all around game benefits me more. So, um, but I've never, you know, I think with the five piece construction and everything that goes into the TP5 and TP5X, it is, it is such a stable golf ball and, you know, balls that I've hit previously that I feel like I've struck well and I'll get moved in a crosswind where, you know, it's almost like I had to get used to the TP5 of, not playing for as much wind in a crosswind yeah. uh, which is which is a nice thing to do it you know if you've got a hard left or right wind and there's water on the left you know feeling like you don't actually have to aim it in the water or aim it you know close to the hazard line to to hold this ball online um isn't is a nice thing you're a smaller guy and you've got the best players on the planet watching you hit this new sim driver and they all stop when you're going to hit it that everyone turns at some point from Tiger to DJ to Day to Wolfie coming through and Colin and Ram. They all turn and watch what Rory's doing. How does that feel to hold the attention of three or four of the best other players on the planet with yourself? Yeah. Um, and how do you, how do you a, smoke it so it's, far? It's I, mean, a huge, I mean, it's a huge compliment. I, I mean, I don't know. I obviously... I've, I've learned, I've, whatever way I've learned how to move my body and move the golf club, I've been able to move it in a very efficient way that creates quite a lot of speed. And, you know, I can keep up with DJ that's 6'4 and 200 and 
15 points. He's got know. his eye on you. He's watching what's going on all the time. Like you're the guy. He, yeah, he, I mean, I you know, I, I use the grind well. I I you know, I leverage. I I you know, I I do everything that a biomechanic would tell you to do to hit the ball a long way, but it it's just come naturally to me. It's not something I've ever really tried to work on. You know, when I was a kid, I you know, I try and hit it as hard as I can and, and but it you're it's instinct, you know. For me, it's it 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 was second nature. This is what I need to do to to create a lot of speed and a lot of power. And then, over the last few years, I've obviously hit the gym, got a little bit bit stronger, been able to stabilize that, um, and control that speed a bit better. And I think that all goes into you know making me you know one of the best drivers of the golf ball. Wolfie talks about the ground. How can we, as casual golfers, listeners, how can we try and use the ground a little differently? So. It's, 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 uh, I guess it's like if I'm trying to sort of relate it to something where like, say, a, say you go into the gym and you you want to do a box jump onto mm-hmm. a box, right? It's that initial, yeah. you know, it's that initial, you know, it's, it's, it's Explosion. split second of your, you're pressuring into the ground and then you're jumping. Or if mm-hmm. someone asks you to jump as high as you can, what are you going to do first? You're going to. Squat. you're going to squat and then you're going to go up you're going to try to get some tension in there and really use the ground to explode off so it's the same it's the same thing in golf it's you know i i, I don't do uh, you know i load into my right side on the way back and then from there you know it's a it is a plant into my left and then and then it's an explosion up through my left leg and then you turn around your left leg and post up and but again it's an, none of these things i'm really thinking about it's Mm. just it's it's what happens but it's really a you know it's a it's a lateral shift plus a like a mini jump is is the only that's how i can describe it i watch you make those movements and i think you must be a great mover on the dance floor at some point in the night you got any carpet rugs on there um any movements out there carpet creepers i'd I'd need i'd need to be well well lubricated (laughs) to um i I'm too self-conscious. <laughs> Probably think I'm a good dancer at a certain point in the night. But, yeah, we all do. Um, but no, I we'll I move around like so. Mick Jagger. Yeah. So raw wedges, you've always played them. Why? Um, I don't know. I think you, I. I remember when I first got my like my first rusty wedge um, back in like cool, wasn't it? I yeah yeah and. You know, you you, Did you you stick it in a bucket bucket of water straight away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's and you saw the pros using them. Yeah. Um, and this was a thing back in the sort of uh, late nineties, early two thousands, I think. And I remember I got my first one, and I just I loved it. I you know, I didn't really know the reason behind why they were making raw wedges. You I just, just looked badass. I just, they just looked like, cool. Yeah. yeah. So I got my first one, and then ever since then, um, I've sort of i've liked them and they they look cool and uh and it, it is something about them like a dull wedge or a, ra- or a raw wedge it just looks like it's going to spin more i don't know it's just something it just it looks like it's you're you're going to be able to spin it um so yeah what can amateurs get from them do you think i mean you you know they, sometimes the amateurs don't like the clubs to rust like that and i'm with you i was always impacted by a generational thing and if yeah. the guy had a rusty wedge man i wanted rusty wedges yeah. copper wedges yeah. before that i wanted yeah. copper wedges yeah, yeah. but little did i know that there's no plating between the grooves and it's all a feel thing but for these ams is there anything else that they should be aware of in a raw wedge that you think guys there's a benefit here? yeah i mean there is a benefit obviously with a raw wedge or a raw face you're gonna have more f- friction um which obviously means more spin if you're playing in wet conditions uh and the ball's a little wet you're going to get more spin than you would from just a normal chrome face i think i mean there's been tests on where the rpms go down by thousands yeah so um if you can get more spin especially like even even when it's not like a wet day but you're playing early in the morning and there's dew on the ground and yeah. stuff like that that, rough, that yeah, yeah. and the, it makes it makes a huge difference mm-hmm. so just to have that extra you know couple hundred or, or thousand rpms of spin makes it makes a big difference so um I, I completely agree i mean it's something now that if we can give gam- golfers that just from buying a club rather than having to 
change anything i mean why wouldn't you it's another great thing that we see here and one of the great things i saw when i watched some of the golf last week and i saw you promoted it on social media was the kids in china and what's happened there and how that's grown there at shishan and your kids clubs in those mm, chinese yeah. kids i mean that's pretty amazing right how does that feel for you yeah that's cool i mean i i'm i feel so fortunate that uh you know we've been able to work together to create this this line of uh rory clubs and kids clubs that um are as far reaching as you know china you know kids mm. in china are using them and obviously kids all over the world um are, are hopefully benefiting from from those clubs but it's it's really I'll tell you now someone who's not benefiting is my i've got twins a boy and a girl and the rory girls clubs are on back order till january in the pink so she's having a head off my little guy's got his blue paint fill. He's over the moon. So do you know anyone that I can speak to who can pull some strings around here and get me a set of the girls' ones before Christmas? Because at the moment, I'm saying that we're out. I'm saying we're toast. Trotty, if I don't know the beauty, <laughs> I don't, I, no, if, if you don't know anyone, then I, I certainly don't. But the cool thing as a parent, and I'm speaking from experience, because I re- remember back to being a kid and I had a Bernard Langer bag. And basically then, you know, it was always when I started getting closer to tour players, Bernard Langer had a place. I always wanted to meet the guy. Yeah. I did. Great guy. But you can hold that place yeah. for generations. That's got to feel it's, nice. It's yeah. Just it's nuts thinking about it that way, because I remember how like my first golf hero was Nick Faldo. Mm-hmm. And I used to call myself Rory Nick Faldo McElroy. And to think that there's kids out there that think the same about me as i did about faldo and then obviously going on to other players um it's a you know it's it's a cool feeling but it's also a big responsibility right you have to you know you have to take that seriously and you have to try to be a good role model and conduct yourself the right way and uh it's a you know there's a lot of a lot of people that look up to to what i do and um you know I'm, i'm trying my best to to do do everything the right way I think you're doing a good job and and i mean that and one of the things that i'm very proud of you for and to be honest the rest of this podcast doesn't matter until now is the Ryder cup you're the man for us we love it you keep it going how do we secure that over in the states coming up um you know it's 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 a tough one um the last obviously the last three Ryder cups have went with uh home, home, advantage. home advantage um it's you know it's a, i don't know i always i always feel that europe have such a good chemistry and rapport and you know i'm i'm excited to you know i still need to make the team first but I, i'm excited to play under uh podrick uh and out uh, in whistling straits next year um it's a you know i think there's there's so many things that go into the Ryder Cup, and but I think first and foremost, if you if you can get a group of twelve guys together that realize they're all playing for the same thing, and they're not, you know, you put your you check your ego at the door, and we're in there, and you're one of twelve, and no one's more important than anyone else, and you go out there and you do your job, you get your point, and you play for that team as if they are your brothers, your family. Uh, and for that week, they are. That they they really are. And I've really come to embrace the Ryder Cup, and it, it means an awful lot to me. Uh, and I'm very proud to to be on the European team and and be one of the leaders of the European team. And uh, you know, I, I you know, I think we've got a good chance in Whistling Straits. It's not your typical American golf course. Um, the weather in Wisconsin in the end of September could be a bit dodgy, which could probably suit us more than it suits the Americans. So um I'm, I'm i'm excited for it uh it's a you know it's it's the i think outside of the majors or even it sits alongside the majors as, as the biggest event in golf and uh it's it's been a privilege to be a part of for the last five of them hopefully i make my sixth team coming up here and um hopefully we can get our you know i've, I've won four out of five and hopefully this this time we can make a five out of six We've got um, Wolfie and Morikawa on here tomorrow separately. Is there anything I can do to help here to just put the bad vibes on them? Um, <laughs> anything I need to stress them out about? No, I think you're okay at the minute. That's, uh, you call me in when you need me. Yeah. So how about advice? Now look, all you guys are amazing at helping each other. How about, on a serious note, advice for 
Colin and Matt as they're starting their pro career. They've got big futures in front of them. We don't know if they're Ryder Cup or wherever, but what would be the advice at the start of the journey? I mean, geez, they, they you know, they've started their journey faster and better than you know, even I you know, I started mine. You know, it only took them a few starts to get their first wins. Um, you know, going down the stretch at uh in Detroit where where Matt won and Colin's pushing them all the way and I mean it's you know, what they've been able to do coming straight out of college is is phenomenal. Um, so I think they're a great addition to the TaylorMade team. Uh, and I mean, advice-wise, I mean, especially, I mean, they, they both are very different players. Colin is technically very sound and, and you know, very, doesn't seem to do... Seems a cool cat. Cool cat, doesn't seem to do a lot wrong, very solid, very, you know, hits a lot of fairways, you know, be a good foursomes partner. Be a great foursomes yeah. partner. Um, so for him, I mean, it's just, you know, for both of them, don't change anything. I mean, you've got on, on you know, one side of the, you know, the road, you've got Colin who sort of is technically very good and orthodox and all this sort of stuff. And then you've got on the other end of the spectrum, you've got Matt who is, does it his own way. You know, he's got a, he's got this sort of funky action, but it, you know, coming into the ball, it is technically so good. Mm. Um, and I think for, what I've seen over the years is, you know, people get on tour and then they think they have to try to do something else to get to the next level or, you know, whatever that is. But, you know, these boys have already proved that they're at that next level. They don't need to do anything different. They just need to gain experience, play in these tournaments, play the golf courses that they've never played before and just keep doing that. You know, they've already won on tour. I mean, they're, you know, they've, they've already got off to this great start. Um, and for me, it's all about, experience and getting into different positions and getting in contention in different places and going up against some of the best players in the world and realizing so again for me you know as a 19 20 year old playing with ernie ells playing with phil mickelson tiger woods playing with all these guys that i looked up to for such a long time and realizing you know i'm i might not be quite as good as them but i'm not that far away and i think that's what these guys are realizing and that inspires you that's like okay i if I just work a little bit harder and I gain some experience, you know, in a year or two's time, I'll be right up there with the, the best players in the world. Mm. Rory, I really like where you're at. You're giving off a persona that you got this, you're in a good spot, you're letting your golf do the talking. The only thing that's left for me to ask you now is these speed-injected questions, and hopefully you can do that final bit of talking, get my daughter some clubs. Did I tell you we need to talk that <laughs> out? And other than that, we can move on here. All righty. <laughs> so, Tory Pines or Beth Page? Tory Pines. Would you rather lead the tour in strokes gained off the tee or strokes gained putting? Strokes gained putting, just for one season, just to see how it feels. The one course you could play every day for the rest of your life? Augusta National. LeBron or Kawhi? Ooh, LeBron. Messi or Ronaldo? Ooh, Ronaldo. I'm sticking one in here. Steve Gerrard or Eric Cantona? Uh, Only because I want to know. Gerard. Good man. Yeah. I want to sure you go there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, just longevity and, yeah. Been a while, but window or aisle? Aisle. <laughs> Number of career hole in ones? Professional? No. Any way you like. Even um, practicing with your mates. Mini pot doesn't count. Okay, um, ten, I think. Ten hole one. What would you shoot, lefty? Oh, um, what's eighteen times six? Probably average six a hole. <laughs> hundred, yeah. I'd, I'd hopefully break a hundred and ten. Potting would be tricky, right? That's why I always. I mean, you no, could I don't. Around, <sighs> hitting big slices, I reckon. We'd no big hooks. I can it? only hit big hooks, lefty. Yeah. <laughs> Same as righty. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite TV or Netflix show right now? Uh, Mind Hunter. Mallet or Blade? Mallet. Beach or the mountains? Mountains. And the one shot in your career you wish you could have a mulligan on? Ooh. There's two and they're both at Augusta. Um, honestly, the... Uh, I had a putt for an eagle 
uh, on the second hole in the final round on Sunday in 2018. If I could, if I had a held that, I think I would have had a lot of momentum. I would have felt good about myself. Uh, I might have went on to at least challenge a bit more for the Masters that year. Where's the other? Just tell me the other one. The, the other one would be the, the tenth hole in 2011. Uh, final round yeah. Augusta but I I was already losing it at that point mm. so I don't know if it would have made a know difference what, yeah. you don't know what so, the outcome would have been yeah there, so so it was I think that one in the, on the uh, second hole in 18 because I was feeling pretty good I had a great second shot in that just yeah it, if that had went in it could have been a, a you know a, a big momentum builder golf's a fine line and you know we're loving helping you get the right side of these fine lines and we know we're going to get you in this place for Augusta where you're ready and that's our job done aside and we'll do all we can but we love having you at these photo shoots we love hearing you playing the best golf of your life we love the way you're so raw and you give us such good feedback and we can't ask for a better ambassador at Team TaylorMade so thanks for everything you're doing for the game regardless of my daughter's pink paint <laughs> Phil thanks for everything you're doing for the thanks, game thanks Trotty and thanks TaylorMade for all the support um, it's been a wonderful experience working with you guys from I guess the end of 2016 when I first started using the M2 driver and then obviously you know progressing through and signing with you guys and going through everything it's been uh, it's been a, a wonderful first few years and, and long may it continue I feel like we're through the surface and I feel like now everything from here is just going to be gravy. That's how the re these relationships go with talk yeah. players. People ask us all the time, but honestly, I mean, the fact that we can sit here and talk so freely, I just know that we're on a good path. So. Yeah, me too. Top man. Good podcast as always. At Rory McElroy on Instagram. He's active on there. You can see what he's doing, what he's out and about. I'm at Trotty Golf. You can capture me there if needs be. Rory doesn't do much work he's one of the low maintenance guys but i'll put anything on of interest that i think this podcast can be found soundcloud spotify itunes the taylor made handle is at taylor made golf guys give us five stars if you like it ask some questions please return you know where to find these podcasts and we'll be back for some more rory thanks a lot cheers charlie cheers bye.